Welcome to the first video in a series that's going to work to teach you how to utilize Excel well as a chemist. Um, now Excel is not just a way to make your data look pretty in tables, it is powerful at graphing and at mathematical calculations that you will all be doing this semester and hopefully for the rest of your life. So maybe at the end of your academic career you can simply say I simply excel at chemistry we covered in this video are just understanding the basics. These are very much basic things you need to know about how Excel operates. Um, so some of the main things are that you can see over here, these are our topics that we're going to be covering. Um, I will zoom in, so if you look down the bottom right hand corner you're able to change how you zoom. So we'll zoom in so you can see a little bit cl more clearly what I'm working with. Um, this whole thing is called a workbook. So one of the first things you want to do whenever you open a new workbook is you want to save it. Because if you don't save it, then you're not going to be able to call it up later. And if something happens, your computer crashes, etc., you don't want to lose your work. So I do file save as, and then you can, you can place it wherever it is that you want to place it. But do note that when you click this little drop down here, there's a whole bunch of different options. Um, and while it automatically picked the right one for us today, later on, you you may find that it did not automatically pick it. And if you choose something like a CSV and you had graphs in your file, um, you will lose the work. So I recommend always saving it as an Excel workbook, an XLXS. And if you need to change where it is, you can just click here and then it'll save it somewhere else for you. Um, but I'm just going to rename this as like video one. Um, you can call whatever your spreadsheet is, whatever it is as it pertains to the object that you're working on at that moment. So we just saved our work. Um, we can also print, if we need to print at any time, you can print from here. Um, one thing that you can see is it's going to automatically pull it up like this. It's two pages. But say I wanted to make it fit on one page because, you know, we don't have, you know, paper doesn't, you know, it does grow on trees, but it's expensive. Um, so you could click like fit sheet on one page and it will automatically shrink it down, making it easier for you to print your pages and maybe paste it into a lab notebook. So that is your spread, your workbook, but now what is a spreadsheet? So if you look down here at the bottom, you can see these tabs. So this is called sheet one. These are called spreadsheets. And so each one is a different sheet, but we could insert a new tab and we can either ensure you see like a worksheet or a chart. These will be the two used most commonly. So if we insert a new sheet, it looks like just exactly like the one we were just looking at. Um, you can click the little plus button and add as many as you want. Um, you can also delete them. So you delete and you can do that to all of them as you want. Um, you can also rename. So um, you can call it as opening or whatever you want to call your tabs and then you can also move them around um, very easily. So these are your spreadsheets and then the workbook is the whole thing all at once. So that's just kind of working around looking at what are all of these different pieces of the workbook and how can I manipulate them. Um, the other thing you want to familiarize yourself with is this ribbon up here. Um, you can click on the file and and that gets you to a new set of ribbons, but then all of these, they each have their own thing that is very useful. And so we will cover different elements of the ribbon, not all of the elements of the ribbons in these, um, ex these Excel tutorials. All right, so now what else do we need to know about this? Um, if you look at the top, there are A, B, C, it's the alphabet, and then along the left-hand side, you see numbers. And so every cell that you click it on, it's sort of like Battleship. The cell that I'm in, so notice that's called a cell. So we have a spreadsheet, a workbook, and a cell. And the cell I'm in right now is C8. If I tab over, I would get to D8. And so notice the letter identifies the column, the number identifies the row, and this is very important. As you go down to the row below it, it now becomes C9 and D9, and the trend just continues. All right, so now, why does this matter? Well, this becomes critical whenever you're referring to cells from a different cell. So I can just type in a random number, and now I have written numbers in D11 and in D12. So I'm going to just label those right here just to kind of remind us what we are working with. So these are these two cells here. Um, now if I want to refer to these numbers later, so say I want to say equals and then 
this cell. I could either type in equals D11 or I can click equals and then click into the cell that I'm referring to. Um, and so like once again let me just time, type it this time instead equals D12 and notice it's now referred to that value. Now those are what's called relative cell references and why that matters is because they are relative to the column and the row that you put them in. So meaning if I take this 8.95 and see how if I hover over my cursor changes once I get to the bottom right hand corner onto this little square. When I do that I can left click and drag it over and what's going to happen is it's going to copy the formula exactly how I had it written prior except it's relative to the prior cell. So meaning if I now type in a different number here and here it automatically changes the row I just said because it's I in this column I said equals D12 but I then scooted that formula one to the right and it scooted the cell that it was referring to one over to the right. If instead I type in equals D11 or D12 but then I make this be what's called an absolute reference and so I can do that excuse me by putting dollar signs in front of the column and also the row. And what that says is the dollar sign says, hey, this column of D12, I want you to keep it. I want it to be the same column. Even if I change and move the cell anywhere in, this, in the spreadsheet, it's still going to refer to this exact absolute cell. Okay, so now when I drag it over, it no longer dr moves it relative, it keeps that cell. Or if I drag it down, it's still keeping that one value. And these are going to be important to us as we're looking at things later on. Um, but for the most part, you are going to be using relative references, but these absolute references are very useful for you. We have rows and we have columns and we have cells and spreadsheets and workbooks. And if you kind of understand all that, then you have gotten the main concepts in this video.